Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, Venom Assault. It's for one to five players, takes about an hour to play, and is for ages 12 and up, I'd say, somewhere around there. And in the game, it is a cooperative deck builder. You're going to be getting recruits as well as commandos, shuffle them up into a 10-card deck, and then draw five. There's certain different scenarios you'll be playing in this game, and there's a whole bunch of them here, along with, of course, we're talking about the expansion in this game, and everything that is included. So we'll be reviewing the expansion portion, as well as the base game, so I'll get excited for that. That kind of stuff. Uh, in the game, though, you're basically trying to defeat Venom leaders on this board. If you can defeat them, you're going to score rewards. There's certain other scenarios in which you're going to try and capture the locations or find scientists and all kinds of different things you can do in this game. Additionally, the characters that you're fighting against also have cards that are called Venom support cards, and these things are going to pop out when you choose to do battle with them, and you'll be battling them with them using dice. There'll be certain requirements, like you'll need to get four dice that are four or higher, or five dice that are three or higher and if you can manage to do that you'll defeat them and based on the scenario what you need to win will differ in each and every single time you play this game but if you can defeat the enemies for the most part in most scenarios you're going to win the game you'll lose the game based on a whole plethora of different ways in addition to getting that event tracker up to five and if that can happen usually you'll have one last chance for most scenarios to do something to try and complete the goal otherwise you'll simply lose by having world domination by the venom anyway let's go ahead and take a look at venom assault this uh looks like a classic style game with a nice twist and included deck building aspect in which you work cooperatively either by yourself or with multiple players to defeat the evil venom which is not hydra by the way let's look so here we have Venom Assault and the expansion Villains and Valor. And as you can see, when it, we went ahead and set it up already for one player, just so we give you the idea of the game, as well as what's included. So let's talk about what's included in the game first. Uh, as you can see, there is Venom Support Cards. These are for the bad guys. And Freedom Squadron, which are for the good guys. Venom Support help the bad guys on the board and in other locations, depending on the scenario. Freedom Squadron are basically the cards you can buy to purchase into your discard pile, which will then later let you use them in your deck, helping you defeat the Venom League. Leaders. You're also going to have an event deck here, and as you can see, I went ahead and set it up for the Villains and uh, Valor expansion, in which normally you're going to have Venom Strike cards, which are the things that progress the game and make you instantly lose once it gets five or some bad thing happens. Additionally, there's some good guy cards and some bad guy cards and some all is quiet cards. In the base game, it tells you how many of each of the red and white cards to add to make the game challenging or less challenging. But with the expansion, they've added dual cards. So you're going to be adding those into the game. You're also going to be shuffling the good guy cards and the bad guy cards up separately and drawing a certain number of each of them, which I believe is six. And then you're going to put them all together. So we have the mixed cards, we have the good guy cards and the bad guy cards here. The all is quiet is still based on difficulty. And then the new Venom Strike cards, you're taking out all the old ones and adding in the new ones which will then give you a uh, both a good and a bad ability on some of them. You'll take all these guys up, and then you're going to shuffle them, and uh, you're going to deal them onto the event deck. You're going to place them on the event deck, basically. Uh, the same is going to be said for the Freedom, Freedom Squadron cards. In the game, that is basically the pool of cards in which you are going to be uh, pulling from. So let's go ahead and take a look at these guys here. There's a quite a few different additional cards added, and you'll know the ones that are from the expansion by the bottom left corner, It'll have this little bell symbol with some wheels or whatever in I don't know exactly what it is But it will show you what the new cards are my card backs are slightly different coloration But yours will not be when you get the game and they are just they do do different things You'll add them into the freedom speed freedom freedom squadron deck if you would like or take them out You can you can decide if you want to add those or not along with the venom support cards as well You'll simply take them and add them into your venom support deck here I just do it something like this just to make it really quick Quick and really easy. Uh, you're going to have the new Freedom Squadron cards. They're going to have some interesting abilities. Uh, the new one is going to be called Teamwork, in which you can play cards on your opponent's turns, which will allow them to draw additional cards and whatnot. Uh, for instance, this one says during the tactical phase of an opponent's turn, all non-active players may reveal the top card of their deck. If that card, uh, card's gun value or combat value is two or higher, they may discard it to give active players combat leader plus two combat each. Wow. Otherwise, return to the top of the deck. And then this card also has a tactical phase of plus three. That's really, really good. I like that. Nice. Um, and of course, they all have all the basic stuff from the original game. You'll just take those, though, and you'll shuffle them and place them here. Additionally, you're going to be getting a ton of scenarios and or missions. In the base game, this is what I have right 
right now. I don't have the, the expansion missions. I played from the PDF file, but this is just from the base game alone. And all of these are different. We're going to be doing a world in darkness here just to, to explain how it is set up. You'll just take this one here, choose which one you want, place the rest of them away from the board, along with uh, completely set up. And in this one specifically, it has 14 Venom Leaders, which you're going to place in the deck randomly, and then 14 rewards, with four of them being the four specific cubes. They're called the blue cube card and whatnot. You'll add those four as well as 10 random uh, reward cards, put them together. There's also additional Venom Leaders from the Villains and uh, uh, the, the Villains expansion in which you can go ahead and add Gorilla and Void. Some of them do different things, or well, they all do different things, uh, but they are all conjunction with other Venom leaders from the base game. So if you understand the base game, you'll understand how all of these guys work as well. And additionally, of course, the Venom uh, support cards as well. The rest of the cards that you're not needing, which are all off the board, are set aside. The last thing you know about is your die and your tracks here. You're gonna get six, 10 die. You'll get those three tracks, whether it's your event where it moves along, different things happen, the leaderboard for health and the leaderboard for defense for your Venom leaders, some tokens, and then of course your main basic deck, which is gonna consist of six recruits and four commanders. You'll shuffle this deck up and deal it to each, deal one deck to each player that is playing the game. The rest of the cards are going to get basically removed from the game and you won't be using them. So for the most part, literally this board here and this deck of cards is all you need to play the game. Venom Assault along with the expansion which I explained how to put together. Let's go ahead and go down and I'll explain the mechanics of the game. We'll play a round or two so you have an idea, complete the setup for the scenario, and then I'll tell you what I think about the game in my review. So here we have Venom Assault and Villains and Valor Expansion attached to it. I went ahead and added the events to it. I went ahead and added the Venom Leaders to it. And as you can see, there's two different colors, which means they're <laughs> mixed in together. I've also added the Freedom Squadron cards and the Support card, just to give you an idea of how it works. But I went with an older mission. We're going to go with World and Darkness, just because I don't have the PDF file available for printing. Uh, and I went ahead and set it up for the most part. Everybody's got their deck. I'm going to be playing with two players here. He's the commander, which means he's going to go ahead and go first. And this will move clockwise uh, throughout each player's uh, turn. And then uh, you've got also uh, the board here. And then this one specifically, it says you need to add four specific rewards to the reward deck. And it's going to be these red, yellow, green, and blue control cubes in which you're going to go ahead and shuffle in this reward deck. You're trying to achieve all four of these in this mission along with liberating this location here. And in order to liberate a location, you need to destroy the bad guy on it and make sure that no bad guy is able to come from the deck back onto this location. If you can do that, you're going to win the game. If it gets to five on this event track you're going to lose the game and at the same time we're going to deal out these guys here and then we're going to place a reward card from this deck underneath each of them so that when you defeat a villain you're going to gain the reward from underneath them additionally when uh, you defeat a villain you're going to add a new villain from the venom leader deck and of course attach another reward to it and put them on here before you start go ahead and look at the board definitely want to do this because there's certain ones that have global effects like for instance this event phase which says all players have to discard one one card from their hand of this specific type uh, of their choice if they have any during when this event card takes place. And event cards take place on the first player's turn at the very beginning of their turn after the first turn. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started now. Everything else is pretty much set up. These can go off the board here, uh, except for the zero will stay there. And uh, this player will go ahead and go first. And all you do is make sure you shuffle your 10 cards, your four of the commandos and the six recruits. And then you're gonna go ahead and draw five cards. You're also going to make sure that you re refill the training ground deck. You're always gonna be putting out cards here, which will happen at the end of every recruitment phase. And then you're going to play your cards out. This is the recruitment phase of the game, when which you're going to then go ahead and look and see what you've got. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight money, and you can purchase the characters here if you have the cost. So if, for instance, this cost eight, you can pick up this guy here. There's a five, there's a six. You can't pick up these guys here because they're worth 10, so they're a little too expensive for you. If you could purchase more than one, you can if you would like. Let's just go ahead and go with Spirit here. This one says he has a teamwork ability, which means he can play it on another player's turn during their tacticals phase. And for every Venom support card discarded this turn, you can increase that player's active combat value by one for their commander. Put that in their discard pile. After you've gone ahead and purchased all the cards that you want from this deck here, you're then gonna go ahead and deal with the bad guys here on the table. Now it's very unlikely you're gonna be able to defeat anything early in the game, 
but there's always a possibility of that. Let's go ahead and look at the different characters here. We'll go ahead and pick one. Let's look at this guy here. He has three health, so we're going to go ahead and fight him. And we're going to put the health marker on three. And he's got four defense, so we'll put four on his die defense. And what that means is pretty simple. You need to have three of your die be at least four or higher to beat this guy currently. Additionally, during the combat phase, you count all combat die with a roll of six as automatic failures. So you need to beat him with a four or a five, at least three of them. But luckily, there's nothing here on this little tra track here, so I'll explain that on the next turn. Let's go ahead and now go to our, our tableau again. We're going to choose one of these guys to be our leader, so we'll go ahead and move this guy up as our leader, and we're going to place the commander token next to him. And if you are using your character as a commander, you're going to be using this marker here, the symbol here. That's all you're using. You're not using anything down here below in the area in which it has like read a tactical phase bonuses. So you're going to put two dice on him because there's a number two there. Uh, and additionally, everybody in your supporting areas is going to use these abilities here. And for the beginning of the game, you're basically going to be getting a tactical phase of plus one. And this is your tactical phase. So put all four tactical phase die there. Then you're finished with that. And then you're going to go ahead and check this here. If there are any numbers here, you're going to take from this Venom support deck and place them down here in this tableau area and add them to the villain or make you subtract something. But we're just going to go with this guy here for right now. So there's nothing that's going to affect us other than not. We don't want to roll sixes. We want to roll fours and fives. So we'll take all of our die. We have six die and we need to have at least three of them before higher. Yeah. So uh, we have three sixes, which would generally uh, do exactly what we needed, three die, uh, four or higher. But because of his ability, all these sixes are failures. So now we're gonna look at these. We need three at four or higher. We do not have these three at four or higher. So we're going to lose this phase, put the die back. The uh, shadow staff laughs at us for failing miserably because we rolled sixes. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and pass this over and we're going to take all of our cards we played and uh, we can choose. Now this is the retirement phase. If we do not want one of these guys here, we can discard one. So let's go ahead and take this commander and we're going to uh, retire him and you put it in the retirement pile there. That's removed from the game, basically. Or not removed from the game, but removed from our deck. Put the rest of the cards here into our discard phase, uh, our discard pile. And then we're going to go ahead and draw up to five cards. If you're ever going to draw into your deck and you don't have anything, you're going to take your discard pile and shuffle it and then place it as a deck. So if we had to draw pl plus one card, we'd, we'd have to do that. That is the end of that specific turn. The next player is going to get a turn as well. One, two, three, four, and five. Revealing the cards once again. This two, and, oh, and also, of course, flipping over one of these cards. You're always going to, at the end of the turn, have a total of five cards here. Now you got two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight points once again to purchase. Let's go ahead and pick something else. We'll pick this guy here, Snapshot, which says during the recruitment phase, you can choose one of the following abilities, and there's one and two abilities that you can choose from. Uh, we'll just go ahead and take this guy and put it into our discard pile. Then we're going to go ahead and select a commander to become our commander. And now we're going to go ahead and place our die. So we've got our two, and then we have one on every single one, as we normally will, which will change throughout the game. And then we can pick somebody else. Let's go ahead and go for somebody that has these numbers here. Let's go for this guy here, Black Backdraft. He's going to have his three, and then he's going to have three as well. And he has two here. Now it says tactical phase. After a combat leader is chosen, discard one random freedom supporter from play. So we've chosen our combat leader. Now we're going to go ahead and discard a random freedom supporter, which are these guys here. At this point, it really actually doesn't matter. So we'll just go ahead and select this one. He gets discarded and we lose his die. And then he's going to drop two cards down on the field. One tactical phase plus one defense, as well as one heart for every wasp in play beyond the first. This is a wasp. And now two, a sky claw. Uh, discard one freedom support card of your choice. Uh, and then if, if this location is in the sky, he will retire the chosen card instead. But he's not in the sky, he's in the Arctic. So we'll lose another, another guy. He's going to go ahead and... Uh, just be discarded into the discard pile. Well, we lose that die. Okay, now we're good to go. We need three die at four, and we have four die, so it is possible. Now, if it's not possible, for instance, if it says we need three die at four and we only have two die, it's going to end here and we just instantly lose. But let's see if we can pull it off. 
We do not. We're missing. We, we, we missed by one. Let's go ahead and say we did, though. Let's say we magically managed to pull that off, in which case we have three die at four. This guy would be defeated. We would obtain a reward. Hopefully it's a cube. It is not. It is the Phantom Brigade, and it says once per game, uh, use this card to double the final combat value of your combat leader in combat. So if I use this card on my turn, it would have given me four dice here instead of two. We'll save that and set it aside until we want to use it. It also has victory points uh, at the end of the game for each individual player if you acquire those cards. And then, of course, the rest of these cards get discarded, unless I want to retire somebody. Maybe I'll retire this commando. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and draw our cards, refill this board here, and as well as three, four, five, shuffle these up, put it here, as well as we're going to deal a new reward out to the Arctic area, along with a new Venom leader that's going to come out. He has a global effect. This one says any Freedom Squadron card discarded by the active player on their turn outside of the end of their turn is retired instead. This effect immediately happens a maximum of two times per turn. So if we're not retiring a card on our own, he's going to make us retire cards. That's, that's very, very scary. Void is nasty. Uh, as well as now we're going to go ahead and go back to the first player's turn. Now, the before, at the beginning of the first player's turn, you're going to draw an event card and do what it says. Let's play Soldier. And this one here says that a, a tactical phase. After the Venom support have been drawn, choose a Venom support card and a Freedom support card to discard. And that's basically what happens. There's also additional... Uh, like flavor text here. This gets set out for the entire round so that you remember to utilize it. Uh, the other type of card that is gonna be drawn with a lot of type of cards, but this one here is Venom Strikes that will move up on this tracker here. And if that was the card that was drawn, you're gonna actually go move it this tracker up by one and do what it says. It says that, oh no, Venom has activated the control cube. This reward no longer is useful. So red, the red cube card, which is one of these rewards, is no longer actually useful throughout this game. That's, that's terrible. Uh, additionally, these ones here, because from the expansion, are gonna have a, 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 a global effect that can help the good guys. So for instance, count all combat die with a, re -roll, uh, with a roll value of one as an automatic success. Not too bad, right? That's cool, I like that little aspect of the game. Okay, so that is basically how those work. There's additional cards in here. Sometimes they'll say, all is quiet, which means nothing happens. And in a four and five player game, these aren't there. And you can add them in a two player, two or three player game, as well as there's good guy cards, and then there's simply the bad guy, or the bad guy cards, and simply good guy cards that can be drawn from the deck as well. Uh, so then you're going to go back and continue playing the game. And your objective is obviously to find out where those cubes are and obtain them. Let's see if I can find one. Oh, there it is. If I can find all four of these, eliminate this guy with no more Venom leaders left in the deck, you'll win the game. If this track reaches all the way to five, you'll accomplish all of these nasty abilities for the, the hero, the bad guys. And uh, Venom will also win if you do not successfully achieve your goal in the game. And that's pretty much how it works. You're just going to be going around the table trying to complete objectives, most likely failing a lot as you start out but as the game rolls on it starts becoming a downhill battle at, or I guess a downhill battle because it gets easier and easier because you're going to be getting really cool cards to do a bunch of things during combat phase during the tactical phase like this card here will make you discard your entire hand for one turn and you just lose your turn but on the next turn you'll draw an additional five cards making it making it a lot easier for you to win uh, that, that combat phase and so on and so forth and that's pretty much the idea of this game the new stuff like I said before is there's freedom squadron cards that you play outside of your turn there's some new venom support cards to do a bunch of different things the of course, the events deck now have the different types of, oh, what do they call it? The Venom Strikes that have a bad and a good aspect on them, as well as some new good and bad cards that you can switch around and use, as well as Venom Leaders. Uh, a lot of stuff to talk about, but really the game's pretty simple when it comes down to it. Just you're going to be recruiting, doing your tactical phase and rolling your dice, and then retiring a card, passing it along. Whenever it's the first player's turn, you draw an event card. That is how you play the game. All right, let's come up and let's review the game. So, caveats, caveats for Venom Assault and the expansion Villains and Valor. Let's go ahead and uh, talk about the board a little bit. There are a couple additional aspects to the game, which are locations, and those locations will tie into missions, and missions will change. That example of the gameplay that I showed you, there is more than just that. You're going to actually be sometimes not dealing with bad guys to start on the board and you'll be controlling areas and they'll be trying to take them from you. You'll be searching for scientists. You'll be utilizing some tokens in the game. There is a lot of different missions. Let's go ahead and just pick one at random and I'll explain to you the victory conditions. Here's one. Freedom Squadron must be the first to locate these strange meteors from outer space and decode the secrets of the binary code. Uh, reach 
the first event marker and see its description to decode the binary, or attain seven Robotron tokens, located, locating enough allies to scare away the threat of Venom and their dark allies, the Robocons. Which is not the game we played, or I explained to you. Uh, there's the expansion one, which is the one where you're going to be basically controlling locations, and the Venom support are going to come and try and stop you from doing that. You're going to try and control all the locations on the board, but if you don't and you lose your characters that are protecting that board, the Venom leaders are going to come out, you're going to have to try and deal with them. That's a very, very unique twist to it. The expansion brings a lot of unique aspects to the game. One of them, of course, my favorite being playing cards on other players' turns to assist them. I like that a lot. Uh, and otherwise, that's pretty much the idea. There's sea, air, and the Arctic for each of the different locations, and the Venom leaders will actually... And Venom Leaders and cards from your Freedom Squadron will affect those locations. If you're in water, gain this bonus. If you, if the Venom Leader is in water, he'll gain this bonus. So you'll lose a bonus. And uh, so on and so forth. So maybe I want to build a sea deck. And maybe Grant wants to build a support deck. And Callie wants to build an Arctic deck. And you can, oh, I want to build a deck that focuses on my commanders getting buffed. There's a lot of different building in the game, regardless of just your deck itself uh, and fighting the, the bad guys. It's how you want to support other players. Maybe somebody wants to build a full support deck. So that way on other players' turn, he can just play cards down to help them, which is really, really cool. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about a couple of these new and old cards. The new one here, we have a Razor Shark. Uh, this one here is a tactical support. There are two different types of the Venom supports. One of them is going to be tanks, and the other one is going to be the soldiers. The tanks are, look like a little tank symbol. The soldiers look like a little guy with a gun. Certain cards will affect those in certain ways. For instance, Tactical Phase. Look at the top card from your draw deck and add its uh, currency value to the Venom Leader's defense. Wow. And discard the revealed card afterwards. Additionally, if he is in the C, add the revealed card's bonus to the Venom Leader's health as well. Wow. Wow. That's a scary new card. Skyclaw. Discard a freedom support card of your choice. And if it's in the air, retire the chosen card instead, removing it from the game. And then you have the basic ones from the original deck, which do have unique things as well, but like Pythons, plus one to health, or like Ice Burster, plus one to health, and if it's in the Arctic, discard a random freedom fighter. And of course, one's a tank and one is a soldier. Uh, you're going to also get the Freedom Squadron cards. One of them is like the Barricade. Teamwork. During the recruitment phase, you can play this card. The active player may draw two cards, discard any cards that match the already card, uh, already cards in their hands, so they're not going to have matching cards, but still drawing two cards to help your opponent for just this one card. Uh, and of course, Tactical Phase. For every Freedom Support uh, fighter you have, increase your combat leader's combat value by plus one. That's really good as well. And you'll have the option to be picking which cards you want. Here's a USS Freedom. This is actually a specific type of card that's different than the normal type of cards you're going to get, like the tanks and the, the Freedom Fighters. When this card's recruited, it remains in front of you and in effect, and it does not count as in play. Recruitment Phase. Tanks in the training ground cost one less. And the training ground is where you buy stuff like the market. It's going to make all your tanks cost one less throughout the game. Super cool. There's some new leaders like I explained how Void works. When you're, when you're basically discarding cards instead, you're actually going to be retiring them whenever the Venom support is out and as long as this guy is on the field. So you want to deal with the global effect cards as fast as possible. Some characters are going to rely more on Venom support, while other cards are going to rely more on their own abilities, including their own stats. Realistically, if you're getting a Venom leader's health up to seven or eight, it's going to be very, very challenging to beat them, specifically because dice don't roll, oh, sorry, a defense uh, up to a seven or eight. It's, the dice don't roll past seven or eight. However, there are bonuses you can get where it's plus one on your dice or whether you're getting automatic successes and whatnot. So there's that. The artwork on this game is really cool. This reminds me of a little bit of Marvel, a little bit of DC style action, uh, G.I. Joe added as well. You got like the Hydra type characters on the box here. You're going to have like the Predator and like aliens with like different crazy stuff. All the bad guys basically. And then you have some of the good guys in the front here. It's really cool artwork. It reminds me of that like early 90s era style cartoon Ninja Turtles, G.I. Joe, that kind of stuff. I really dig it. And the game really works well. The board itself is, is, is okay. It does what it needs to do realistically. And you're focusing more on the artwork of the cards than you are the board. So I'm not going to knock it for that. All of the different missions are unique in their own way, which is a huge plus in my opinion. It is a cooperative game, so realize that. But you can play, I believe, from one to five players. It says one to five, but I didn't see a one player variant in the rules. Uh, maybe I just missed it or whatever, but we played it at two and three and four, and it all worked just fine. We had a lot of fun, and based on how many players you have is whether or not you can have certain cards in the event deck or how you, challenge you want to make the game. The game is pretty challenging, actually, though, too, because... As you progressively try and go throughout the game, you're going to realize that these Venom leaders are too difficult to beat to begin with. But as you start getting more and more powerful, you become it becomes easier. However, 
the event markers start moving up, and when that happens, bad stuff happens, as, long, as, long, as well as the event deck, which is normally going to be not the greatest thing for the, the good players. So the difficulty ramps up along with your decks getting better and better. Overall, really, really fun. Digging the artwork, digging the vibe of the game, the mechanics are super fun. I like the new unique aspect of going into different locations, the global effects that you need to deal with instantly, and the cooperative aspect of the game. It's really hard to kind of be that one person that's like, you do this and you do this and you do this because everybody's got their hand of cards. So you can't really alpha game in this that much. And then you can also choose the role or path you want to take in Venom Assault along with the expansion as well. The game itself is really good i definitely suggest it and the expansion just adds more goodness and unique aspects to the game do you need the expansion for the base game probably not but i always like to add good expansions with already good games venom assault is a solid game and i strongly suggest you take a look at it provided you don't mind the cooperative nature of the game and of course the luck aspect when rolling die against the venom assault leaders and uh that it can be kind of challenging in that aspect, but there's a lot of mitigating to your luck if you would like to apply it. Definitely take a look at Venom Assault down below, currently on Kickstarter with the expansion, as well as the base game is already out there in, in, in the world. All right, guys, that's what I got. Outro time. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, go check out our star videos. Here on YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment, as well as taking a look at Venom Assault and, of course, the villain's expansion to the game. They're both really cool, and yeah, put them together. Put them together and play the game. If you haven't played the base game yet, it's, it's a really cool cooperative deck builder. There's only so many cooperative deck builders I really enjoy. This one is on there. The brass one is on there. And then I even like the, the villains and henchmen game, which is not related to this one they they it's pretty good but it's also kind of competitive this one's fully cooperative uh as well as take a look at my website unfilteredgamer.com we're currently having like the game dogs but not for very much longer now we'll be adding new giveaways to the site but the way you get the most giveaways now is on our live stream every wednesday at 7 30 p.m pst at the unfiltered gamer page on facebook that's where we do live streams we do a ton of giveaways on there we try to interact with the audience putting names in a hat for you answering questions or participating and also judging to see who's going to win the game we are currently playing so you get to participate in those and then at the end if you're still there you get to see the drawings come out and we send your game we send it pretty much worldwide at the at the cost of my own expense but it's a lot of fun regardless so definitely check that out as well as our friends of bigboardgames.com and the giveaway geek two great sites with a lot of giveaways as well all right guys that's all i got for this time and as always i look forward to assaulting you with my venom <laughs> <laughs>